Uh, hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is day 19 of the January Lead Code Daily Challenge. Uh, wow, it's been almost three weeks. Uh, hit the like button, the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Uh, let me know what you think about today's poem and hope you had a good Martin Luther King's uh, Junior's Day uh, and, you know, do what you do. Uh, but yeah, uh, on today's uh, longest pal palindromic substring, given a st string S, we turn the longest poem. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, so I usually do these explanations and solve these live. Um, the, the key thing to know here is that N is equal to a, or less than a thousand. Um, I think, uh, what was it called? Manager's algorithm, uh, is, is definitely a thing, uh, where you can, you know, uh, it's kind of like, like, uh, yeah, like a dynamic programming thing where, you know, uh, or not dynamic programming. It's, it's kind of similar to, uh, what's it called? Um, uh, one of the string matching algorithms so that you could do in linear time by taking advantage of the failure function. Um, but I don't know. I, I think, and I, I know that some people are trying to like make that a thing. Um, and, you know, but I... I I don't know. To be honest, for me, it, uh, if I were to get this on an interview, um, it is what it is, right? Like, you can learn everything, you, you know, like, there's no point of learning every trivia. Um, yeah, there's like a billion things. And just because, I don't know, I feel like this, for some reason, I get a lot of questions about uh, this particular problem. Um, maybe not a lot, but enough disproportionately. Um, in a sense that I'm like, look, at a certain point, you can't know, know everything, right? And you have to choose to be um you have to choose where to kind of like put the most emphasis on where right? like, yeah, you may get to get this problem like 0.5% of the time. I don't know, not even that high probably, to be honest. Um, then is it worth knowing? And I mean, you know, if you want to learn the underlying techniques of the failure function and then kind of figure out building a model against that, then, you know, that's fine. But I also think that like, it's not really a good use of time. Like, you know, if, if, if you have to choose between spending an hour on this or an hour on binary search or something that's fundamental and that, you know, you might not be super, super good at. Um, I want to do that. Like, even if you want to get your binary search skill from like uh, an A minus to an A or something like that level, right? Like that is more worthwhile than learning manager's algorithm for this uh, longest per Dramatic substring. Uh, but yeah, but going back to actually solving this problem, that's why I went, um, but... I actually do believe it. I mean, it's one of those things where, like, you know, sometimes you just can't know everything, and if you're not a little unlucky on that day on interview, then it is what it is, right? You rather, um, you rather, I think as a strategy, you rather be really good at the things that you're good at, or you know, you, that you know, um, rather than like knowing random trivia that you're probably bad at anyway, because you're not going to get that much practice doing this, or you're spending a lot of time learning this manager's algorithm or something like that, right? Um, and you don't get points for barely sol Like, I mean, okay. Like, you get points for barely solving a problem, but you get more points for for being really, really good at, you know, knocking a problem out of the park on an interview. And as a, and as a result, um, like, you want to be... Like, if you have to choose between being average at 10 things and then be, have an average score on your interview versus being exceptional on five things and hope that you get the five things i rather choose to be really good at those five things because um because you know um because that means that like your grades would be like a super good on those five things and and because if you're average on the other ones then it doesn't matter because you still fail anyway right it's very binary in that regard and you want to hit that higher uh, mark Okay, so rent aside, let's actually solve this problem. Uh, I know that I, eh, it's in a couple of minutes, me ranting. So yeah, so longest part of mix up string, so you could do this in n squared time, given that n is you go to 1,000, and that should be good enough. And um, and the, the, that very naive way is just, you know, there are n squared substrings. Um, but if you check to see if each substring is uh, a palindrome, that's going to be n cubed. And n cubed is definitely too slow, so you definitely want to do better than that. Uh, but for me, it's just about doing your loops in a smart way. Um, it's just basically for each, um, and, you know, being able to terminate early in a good way, though I, I don't think that's necessary, is that, okay, from each, um, you know, from each middle, uh, uh, each middle point, you just kind of expand outwards, and that's generally my algorithm. I will, 
I think maybe that explanation is terrible, but um, but we'll go over it. We'll write it in code. We'll we'll program it. We'll write it in code. We'll go over how um, the complexity and kind of how to go about it. But the idea is that okay. So you know, for example, you have uh, okay. I mean, I'm gonna do this one, uh, but. Yeah, we just try, you know, for example, we try, eh, let's just say A, right? A is a palindrome, okay, it's a, uh, a length of character one. Uh, otherwise, that's, you know, expand, you know, add characters to the left and the right. So now it's but, okay, it's still good. And then now it is our bound, so that's no longer good. So basically, that's the idea to kind of keep going that way. And the reason why that is N square is because there are only N starting points. And at worst, you're expanding it. Um, n times, right? So that becomes n square, and that's the way that I would recommend doing it. Um, again, like if you really want to, um, I would recommend reading up on uh, was it Manner chose algorithm. If you really, really um, want to know the optimal case, I personally have no interest in it. I will tell you up front that I do not know. I mean, I I know of it, and if I were needed. You know, if I needed to do it on a programming contest, um, then I would Google it and just copy and paste it. To be honest, but um, but on an interview, I would not study for it. I still don't know it. I'm not going to study for it because it's just not a good use of my time for that. Like one, like it literally is only useful for this, as far as I know. Uh, if it comes up in another case, definitely leave it some comments uh, below. But uh, but this is not what I'm going to do. Uh, Larry is not implementing this. <laughs> uh, but yeah, but you could probably do some Googling on this if, if that's the case. But yeah, but now let's kind of get started. Um, so for index in range sub n, where um, n is equal to the length of s. Um, well, the, now we can, there are two, actually two things that you have to do. One is the odd length and then the even length. We can do that um, you know, we could do either one. So yeah, and we also have an answer that's just, we'll start at zero. Um, though it should by default have one. But yeah, let's start with, um, let's start with the odd first. So left is equal to right is equal to index. Um, yeah, while uh, S of left is equal to S of right. Um, we subtract one from left. We, sub we add one to right, um, and we can also, you know, have to double check that, uh, well, we could do it here. If left is less than zero, we break. If right is greater than or equal to n, we also break. Um, but before that, uh, yeah, but before that, we check that, um, uh, you know, if uh, the length of the string, which is right minus left, uh, something like that right minus left plus one is the length. If this is greater than uh, the length of answer, maybe we should cache that so that we don't go check the length every time. I don't actually don't know if this is this costly, but it's still, um, you know, easier to just cache. If this is longest, then longest is equal to right minus left plus one. The answer is equal to uh, the substring from left to right plus one, right? I think that's exclusive, um, yeah. And then now we, so that's the odd length. Now we do it again, but for the even length. Uh, but I think that should be, also we could just copy and paste here. Um, hmm. Maybe we could actually put this as a for loop, which is for left, right, and uh, so we can have two things, which is index, index, uh, or um, index, uh, which one do we do? I guess it doesn't really matter. Index, index minus one and index. Um, so then we do this, um, and that'll be should be okay. And then now we just return the answer. Um, I might have some silly mistake here, but that's the general idea. Uh, let's see, let's see it run, and hope it doesn't run an infinite loop. That looks okay. Uh, let's put in the other ones. And then just A, A, C, A, B, A, I don't know. Just, you know, random cases. I don't know if empty cases are a thing. I didn't really look at the constraint. Okay, at least length one, so that might give me an error. That's fine. That's expected. Yeah, it looks okay. Um, at least that's the right link. Let's give it a quick submit. 
Oh, no. Hmm. How, so I did have an off by one here. So this should be index plus one, I suppose. Uh, um, yeah, okay. I guess that's because I need to check before then. And that was negative one, so it was looking um, a little bit too much. Mm. I guess this doesn't matter, but that's a little odd that this doesn't work, though, actually. Hmm. Uh, okay, but let's just check that left is greater than or equal to zero. Um, I thought I, hmm, I checked a lot of things, but not that particular string. Because there, there, it's just an off by one somewhere. Uh, is why that as well. Let's take a look again. That's a silly mistake though. Um, okay, now let's give it a submit. So I think what happened was that it, it just compared it to negative one and then the longest is some weird number and something like that. Uh, this is actually why I, I mean, I mean, it would have been an error anyway, but um, this is actually why I hate negative indexes in Python. Uh, I wish that there's another syntax so that when you do negative one by accident because of these maths, uh, it doesn't go wrapped around. So what happens is that, um, yeah, it wrapped around and that's why it was giving me an issue. Uh, so I, I just checked this was good. Uh, that's just me being sloppy though, to be honest. But um, but I also don't like that syntax because um, cause if I in any in every other language that would have just told me that this is our bounds on one of these goes um, and then. I would have fixed it because it, it didn't need this answer. Even in here, it would tell me that uh, it would go out of bounds. So anyway, uh, yeah. So what is the complexity here? As I said, uh, this is all. This loop is all n, obviously, uh, and this loop it only goes n times, right? So uh, so that's gonna be all of n, and this is only a, a constant number loop. So so this is n square in terms of space. Um, you could say it's O of N, let's just say it's O of N because that, that's the length of the answer. But if you also want to be uh, pedantic, this may be actually N squared because we keep on taking longer strings. Um, you know, so that in this case, technically, we can allocate. Um, I think the. Um, I wonder if these slices actually allocate extra space, but in the worst case, this slice would, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, keep it would keep on creating spaces on top. Uh, so you could say this is n square space, but but you can easily make this n n you can easily make this n space by just keeping track of the left and the right, and then do it at the very end. Um, just getting it at the very end, so then you only do it once instead of this thing where you keep on building upwards. Uh, but yeah. Uh, but it was still good, so yeah. Uh, let me know what you think. Um, hit the like button, the subscribe button, join me in this call, uh, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye bye.